Now today I'm going to show you a little bit about cartoon shading. Some call it uh, cartoon shading, some call it cell shading, um, but it's possible within Lightwave and I'm here going to show you uh, a little example about how you can get along with cartoon shading in Lightwave. I have here a model that I made for one of my recent scenes and uh, I'm going to play with this a little bit. We can start here, just making a little render, so you can see how the model currently looks. And um, there's different approaches to making cartoon shading in Lightwave. First of all, I'll start by making the background here white, so we have a proper background. You can also make some cartoon-like background colors in Photoshop or something like that, but for this I'll just use white. And I'm going to go into the surfaces here. Now there's different approaches, uh, approaches as I mentioned before. Uh, one of the easy ones is to use uh, something called Super Shell Shader that is uh, by default an add-on in Lightwave. Uh, I can do that by clicking here on my, my surface and I'll start by um, going into my shaders here and add the shaded shader here. As you look here, uh, the supercell shader is now going to divide up my surface colors into different layers here uh, to get some sharp edges and uh, that'll gonna, that is going to make some cartoon-like uh, surface. I'll use my arrow down here to add this to all my surfaces, so we can try, take a look, like this. I know for one of these I have a node set on for some subsurface scattering and turn this off, like this. Normally, you see here on, on some some of these, I have some textures on. Um, mostly, when you do this, you don't have textures on, but some do use texture maps for stuff like eyes and so on. Uh, perhaps small logos on a T-shirt or something like that. But uh, for now, I'll just close this and try and render. As you see here, we've got a uh, much more clear. Uh, cartoon-like uh, surface. I'll try here to angle the camera a bit so we can get a little angle on it like this and I'll take my light source here and I'll just take this down a bit and I'll render again. As you see here now I have a very distinct shadows here and some mid-tones and the high tones here. The high tones you can control inside um, Live of here too. Um, let's go in here and take a look. Inside the supercell shader here you have different uh, values for how this uh, surface is going to act up and you can play a little around with the different values here uh, of of uh, the colors here where it separates the colors and so on. You can also uh, go in here and remove stuff like specularity and so on. Um, some also want uh, the cartoon shading uh, more clear without these, these steps in the grading so there's another way of doing this, so I'll turn off here all the shaders like this, and I'll go here and select all these here. I'll then drag the fuse to zero and luminosity to 100 and specularity to zero, reflection to zero in case there's some of that, and we can try render. As you see now, I get the surface here. It's totally clear color now, and I don't have the shadow uh, part of it. Uh, 
some cartoons uh, have like this black outline uh, that you don't see on this render. Uh, you can add that on several ways in Lightwave. Uh, one way is to close this down and go into Object and Properties. And in the Object Properties here, I go through my four parts and go into Edges here and I'll set Silhouette and Sharp Cases here. And I'll set this to Medium and Medium. And I'll do this for all the parts like this and like this. And if I render now, you will see I get a fine black outline here around my surface. I will also get that if uh, I use the, the supercell shader like I did before. You can see here. I'll try turning this on again and do a re-render. As you see now here, my t my color changed from this to this with a supercell shader. I don't see my gradient anymore. That's because I turned my luminosity to 100 before. So if I select all my surfaces here, set diffuse to 100. Luminosity to zero. I'll get my gradients back, and we'll now get this surface here, where you see I still have the outlines. Now the outlines here look a little edgy here, but uh, that's because I don't have any anti aliasing on at the moment. So we'll try and make a little test here. Oops. Adaptive sampling, 0.8 and 0.6, like this, and try. As you see here, I got before and after. I get some pretty neat lines now. I can also make these lines thicker if I want. Uh, there's also a different way of making these lines here. Um, I'll show you that little trick in the modeler. Um, I'll just minimize this and I'll go into the modeler here. Uh, this is a, a different way of making the black edges. I'll just select the model here, but you can do it on the entire model here. I have the model here and I'll make a copy of this. Copy it over here and I will color it black like this. Then I will first of all go into modify here and take point normal move. What point no normal move does is it scales out the polygons in the direction of the heading uh, or the facing. So you ki kind of uh, blow up the model like it was inflatable. So as you see now, if I scale it a little bit, it will bl blow up a little bit the model. And now I need to uh, to flip all the polygons here, because I need to see the inside of the model. So I'll hit F for flip. And then I'll mix this layer with the original layer. And as you see now, even in real time here, I get a nice black outline here from the inside part and uh, it can get get uh, give you a pretty neat look because it kind of changes dynamically depending on the angle that you see it and that can give a real nice uh, cartoon shader effect also um, last I will show you a little other trick here I'll take these and I'll then disable the shader here again, like this, and tell, show you this um, other way of, of setting this up. Um, you can go into the color layer here, and you can, instead of an image map, make a gradient, like this, and I can then uh, set the colors I like here. 
let's select some light green here and I'll drag down here and I'll make a, a darker green like this and I'll pull an extra point here to make a sharper edge you can here control the edges like you want and last I'll make my shadow area down here of the cartoon and I'll again make an extra point here and drag down now if I do this onto the surface um, as you see here I can try and render this is for the pants as you see now on the pants it doesn't really look like uh, cartoon shape I but I can then go into my surface again and I have to up here select incidence angle if I do this you'll see some stuff start to happen here uh -huh. and if I render again you see I get uh, a different surface here. Now this is does not look correct uh, because incidence angle control where uh, the distance I'm sorry it um, it handles the angle that we view the paints from and it places the gradients uh, using that uh, but we need to in the scene to place for the light instead so it it's a light angle that is controlling the surface um, so we need to change incidence angle to light incidence instead and then pick our light source here and we'll then render a frame again and as you see now I get a, a different look uh, however I see an, I need to change the order of the gradient so I'll go in here and I'll just say inverse keys like this and I need to scale this the other way around like this like this and we'll see what happens and as you see now I get some nice stepping here um, I still have some diffuse I can uh, turn that down and add some luminosity again to take a part of the shadow, shadow from the lamp away like this as you see I'll then get some more clear colors in the cartoon shading if I shift back and forth here you see I have some shadows from the lamp but over here I get the clean lines here and the distance you pull up here in the gradients will little control how sharp your edges are like this render again and you see how my sharpness here of the edge change so uh, that's a little bit about how you can uh, make cartoon shading in Lightwave you can of course add this to all the surfaces and you could also if you are more of an old guy go into the node editor and add a gradient to the surface there like I did here uh, but remember you do have to set it to light, light incidence and not just incident angle like I did before so I hope this can inspire you a little bit to try to make some uh, nice cartoons, so see you around.